Hi everyone. <laughs> Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you're watching from. Um, my name is Rose, and this is Judy with Mannequin Madness. Uh, sorry, we we're getting phone calls. Already um, people calling in. Yeah. So uh, if you're tuning in, it's probably because we messed up last week and had issues with the audio, um, and we just want to apologize for that. So this is take two. Uh, hopefully everything will go smoothly this time. Um, we want to thank you for joining us and um, want to thank Town Squared for this opportunity to be able to collaborate with them. So Mark uh, is actually here, and he's going to be our moderator for today, and I'll let him say a couple of words. Oh, yeah. Real quick. <laughs> Hello, I'm behind the scenes, but I do want to say Town Square is a great community. So if you've got a local business, it's an opportunity to meet other local business owners and just learn things that might not be in your core competence for a small business, like marketing, social media, accounting, whatever it is. There's other people that are having the same problems you are. So, you know, meet them on Town Square. And now I'll turn it over to visual marketing. Merchandising, okay. sorry. Okay. And now I'm actually going to turn it over to Judy because she's hosting us today here at Mannequin Madness. If you can't tell. Hello. Just wanted to let you know that Mannequin Madness has a variety of new and used mannequins at discount prices. Here we go. Uh, we have everything from mannequins, dress forms, leg forms, jewelry forms. If it's a mannequin display product, we have it. Uh, you can visit us online or shop in store if you live in Oakland. Thank you. Turn it over to Rose. Okay. Finally, back to me. Um, so like I said, my name is Rose Baldarian, and I am the founder of VMWorks. It's a company that helps small business owners um, do visual merchandising and learn how they can attract more customers into their stores and get them to shop longer and buy more stuff. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about spring displays and the different things that you can do, whether in your windows or inside your store. Um, we promised you three things. So here is our presentation today. Let me click over to that. Ta-da! Okay, um, so before I start most of my workshops, I usually ask um, the attendees what three things they want um, their customers to remember or think about when they come into their stores to shop. So when they leave, uh, what do you want them to remember about your company or your, your brand? What do you want them to tell people about? Um, just think of these three things. And whatever those three things are, um, make sure you stay in line with that, with whatever decisions you happen to make during the course of the workshop. Um, so spring displays. So three things. The first thing that we're going to go about is how to incorporate color into your displays. What I really like about these two photos is that there's two different ways to um, make your merchandise pop. So the one on the left is a kind of like a muted gray background and all of the color and all of um, the exciting things are happening with the pink. Um, and that's what really makes the, the merchandise stand out. And the one on the right, the background is actually where all the exciting things are happening with the props and the little shopping bags. Um, but it still really makes the merchandise pop. The dress still really stands out because the blue complements the dress. Um, and it still makes the hat kind of uh, stand out. It has a lot to do with the lighting, too. Um, and what's also great about this and this is kind of going into props, but what's also great about this is that you can, you know, use shopping bags as an inexpensive way to still display things in your, in your window. But that's getting ahead. We're still in color. Okay, so uh, next thing you can do in your window as far as color is do something more monochromatic. So that means basically picking one color and doing different shade variations of that one color. So for this particular window, we're doing purple. Um, and what's great about this is you can do it at the beginning of the season, um, and so it's still kind of gray, it's still kind of wintry, um, so it's a good way to like really introduce color into people's lives again after winter um, without totally overwhelming them. And then when you get midway through spring, you can do pastels, um, so basically lighter colors. And then Later, closer to summer, you can do primary and secondary colors, so a lot brighter, a um, lot more cheerful. And basically, primary colors are like red and yellow. Is that right? Yes. Red, yellow, and blue. And then secondary colors are what you get when you mix those colors together. 
So it's like what you, it's the same colors you would get if you got like an eight pack of Crayola crayons. And another thing you can do too is grayscale. So um, typically with stores that are more like luxurious or maybe a little bit more urban, um, your customer base probably wants to see a little bit more like a black and white color scheme. And if that's the case, you can do something with grayscale and it can still evoke the feeling of spring if you use certain props that really are symbolic to spring, like these butterflies. And what's great about this is like, you don't often see black butterflies, so um, it really stands out and you're like drawn towards the window. So another way you can incorporate um, things into spring is, or that doesn't make sense. Uh, another thing you can incorporate in spring is props. <laughs> okay, so what I like about these two are, um, it's a good example of how you can use props uh, to make it be relevant to your product or irrelevant to your product. So the one on the left is great because the merchandise are polo polo shirts that typically people would wear if they're like golfing or at the country club. And um, the props that they have on display here are actually little golf tees, which are the things that you put the golf ball on. Um, and even though there are no turf or um, greenery or golf balls or golf clubs in this window display, you can still really get the feeling of um, golf and, and it really relates to the merchandise. So on the opposite side of that, on the right hand side, there are these like eggs that are really cheap. They're probably $2 a dozen, I don't know. Um, and they have these luxurious, expensive diamonds and jewelry. Um, displayed on top of the eggs. So it's it's a really good way to juxtapose like luxury against something simple. Um, and also eggs are really symbolic for springtime. So tips for prop selection. Um, this window is an example of how you can really scream out spring and Easter, right? Like there's Easter eggs, there's bunnies, there's um, floral and greenery in the background and little ducks. Um, and it really screams spring, uh, but it's not necessarily going to scream towards your customer. So I'm, I, I don't know who your customers are and who you're trying to target, but um, depending on who they are, really think about their um, visual aesthetics and what would be pleasing to them and what would, tar what would draw their attention. So it might not be little bunnies and um, ducks, but it but it might be. So really think about what would draw them. So going into that, you don't necessarily have to do Easter for spring. You can do other things as a uh, spring display. So you can focus on things like weather. So this example is great because the only prop that they have in here is actually this little tiny cat in the back of the window. And the rest of it is just drawn on and painted on to the actual window glass. So. It's a great example and it's also uh, great to incorporate the rain season because you're kind of transitioning still from the beginning or from the end of winter into the beginning of spring. So it's a good way to transition. Another way that you can focus on weather is like with these big styrofoam prop balls and uh, raindrops. And you can hang it inside the store, you can hang it um, over your register, you can hang it in your window display. Um, another thing you can think about with weather is like rain gear and what you would wear around this time. And another great thing too is it's a good way to, um, to introduce your spring line. So like this is a good time to remind people, hey, it's time to wear sunglasses again and scarves and hats. Another thing you can focus on with spring and another theme you can do is uh, flora and um, growth through, through like flowers. So this is another good example too of how your background can really make your product pop. So with this one, I like how they juxtapose like the hard leather studded belts and stilettos, um, all black up against this really light floral springtime background <clears throat> and it, sorry and it also still like reflects the ruffles on the jacket still reflects the petals on the flowers 
And it doesn't have to be all about flowers. Uh, you can also incorporate like gardening and growth and grass into the mix. Another way to symbolize growth is through um, animals. So little ducks are usually a good example of that. And this is great if you have like a more rustic, um, chic boutique. And uh, you can just take egg cartons and stick little peeps in there. Although I don't know if you'd want to stick like uh, consumables in your window. You might have ants too in your display. Okay, another good symbol, uh, animal symbol for springtime are butterflies because they're like totally symbolic of metamorphosis and change. <clears throat> and a lot of times people think of bunnies around spring. Um, and this is an anthropology window and it's a really good example of um, how you can take like an animal, like a bunny rabbit and then turn it into something a little bit more macabre um, for your audience depending on what they're interested in and what their style is. So this works for anthropology um, customers. Another thing you can do as a theme is also really focus on, um, on sorry there was an ant crawling right here. <laughs> um, another thing you can do for spring is focus on outdoor activities. So different activities like this is a good example because they give you a lot of um, different ideas. So you can like incorporate kites or do a scene where it's like a picnic. There was an ant. There <laughs> a picnic at the park. Um, do, like I said, a garden or um, golfing or butterflies, rainbows. So here's another example is um, riding a bicycle. And you don't have to put an entire bicycle in there. Like you can just kind of give the feeling of a bicycle like this, this display. Um, they just put two tires and a basket. It's not even like a real um, bike basket. It's actually just like a wire basket that they stuck in there. And even the mannequin isn't complete, which is great too. It kind of reflects back to the props. Um, it's missing hands, it's missing feet, um, it's missing a head. <laughs> so you can still do all these things. And actually with this particular one, I think they even have the tires spinning. Um, that might be a bit much for one window display for you to do though. <laughs> but it's a great idea. And then um, you can also do kites in the window and that's pretty easy. You can just hang them. You can take, you can upcycle and take tires and um, spray paint them and hang them like anthropology did here. And you don't have to use actual objects. You can also just take what you have existing, like whatever risers or pedestals you happen to have and spray paint them whatever color um, will make your merchandise really stand out. So same thing with this. This adds a lot of um, visual appeal in the background. And you can paint it whatever colors that will work well with your merchandise. Um, these are actually just hula hoops too. So another thing you can focus on are different holidays or events that are happening from March through May. So like St. Patrick's Day is an example. Easter is also an example. Um, what's great about this, these are actually Easter eggs. Um, you can replace the eggs with a product or you can put the product on top of the eggs. This is actually a tutorial that um, Mannequin Madness sells so you can learn how to make this. That's my plug for Judy. Um, and there's uh, Mother's Day, of course. And this one is actually Memorial Day. It's red, white, and blue. But if you want to do something more about sale, you can also incorporate like a sale sign. So another tip for um, selecting props in your window displays, you want to grab people's attentions. <clears throat> but you don't necessarily want to detract from your product. So like this is great because um, the color is really eye-catching and it really pops out against the white stark background. Um, but it took me a second to actually figure out that there's actually merchandise in this window display. And um, and I think if unless you're really searching, you're probably not going to see it. So for this window, I would suggest doing something like this. Um, and it's just a little necklace bust that you can put um, 
jewelry on or whatever, but like whatever it is, it doesn't even have to be that. It can just be like a little piece of plywood or something that you paint that you use to elevate your product. So another thing too that will help draw people's attention and catch their eyes are um, overscaled objects. People are really drawn to that. Um, just remember the space, uh, like let's say you're putting it on a table, um, you don't wanna take up the majority of the space and lose space for your product. Um, and you also don't wanna take the attention away from your, your merchandise. Um, and repetition is also another good one. So you take one item and display it in mass like these boats. And unexpected objects, so like you wouldn't think someone would be displaying dirt in their window display, but here it is, and it works well with the springtime. Another thing you can do is make your own props. So these props are actually made out of um, the store's merchandise, so they sell teacups and forks and all that, and they put it together to create this little creature, and it's really cute, um, and it's inspiring, so it's, it's good for customers too, to get different ideas. Um, another thing you can do is hang a clothesline and just display your product off of it. You can also do banners, and what's great about that is you can use different textures, you can um, use different colors, whatever will uh, make your merchandise really uh, stand out. And you can do paper medallions, so you just fold a piece of paper and then connect the ends. And if you put a circle in the middle, then they're like flowers. Uh, you can take yarn balls, and um, what's great about these is they're fairly inexpensive, right? And you can um, choose whatever colors will work well with your merchandise. You can also do paper lanterns, which are great because they take up so much space, and they're really cheap. Or origami, if you want to have your sales team have a little folding party, you can have everyone fold when they're not busy, and um, then display it for a window display. You can take corks, wine corks, and dip one end in paint and then stick it on the wall. Just make sure, like I said, whatever you do, make sure that it reflects back to your product. Like the, the bright yellow here reflects the yellow belt. You can also do string art where you take um, like a silhouette of something and then poke pins and then connect the pins, con uh, connect the pins with string or yarn. And that's also a good way to create lettering, like this. So that brings me into graphics, third way to incorporate spring into your display. Um, you can, first you need to determine what your purpose is for including uh, graphics in your display. So with this example over here, they actually use graphics to help frame the window. So it really draws your attention towards the center, which is great. Yes, sorry. <laughs> okay, another way that you can use graphics is to just uh, kind of use it as a prop um, to bring color into the mix and some uh, detail. And you can also use it to convey a message and um, invite people to, to shop like this one. Um, you can use it to educate people about your product. You can use it to remind people that there's a holiday coming up. Um, you can inspire people, you can shock people, uh, like this sign right here says, did I leave the baby on the bus? Um, so whatever it is and whatever, you know, message you're trying to convey, you can do that. Um, you can also just delight your customers. This one's cute. Whatever it is you decide to do, make sure that it's legible. So that means the font, that means the size, and that also means the color. So while this window display is great, it makes the blue pop out, um, it still really makes you look at the product. Um, unfortunately, the signage blends into their, their uh, clothing in the background, so it, you, you don't really see spring showers, it looks more like ring showers. And maybe if it were in blue, it would stand out more, or maybe even just white. Think about the word count. Um, be concise because most people don't have the patience to read a lot of uh, text. So something like this, swing into spring, is good because it's it's quick, it's punny. 
Um, mom, so it's a good reminder of Mother's Day with a heart. And if you want to incorporate social media, you can. You can do a hashtag. You can, you know, include your Twitter handle. And think about the placement. So really pay attention to which direction your customers are mostly coming from. If you have one direction that's, uh, you know, like better than another. Um, and then aim your sign towards that or focus your, make sure that when you're coming from that direction, you're still able to read the sign. Um, and the other thing too is don't necessarily be stuck to the glass. Uh, you can also place your graphics or your message onto props like this. Um, and it doesn't doesn't mean that you have to do your um, signage on the glass. So putting all those three things together, I thought these were some good examples of window displays um, that kind of incorporated all three of these things. So color, obviously, this is great because you really can tell that, oh, this bag comes in these three colors and these shoes go with this bag. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then as far as props go, the neon color in the background is great. Um, the multi-languages is great that say mom. Um, so it still makes you know that uh, this is for Mother's Day. And these are probably good gifts to buy for your mom. Um, and then graphics, of course, is also the lettering. And what's great about the neon is it's really going to stand out at night as well. This is also another good example of um, bringing color into the mix, springtime colors, and the props with these umbrellas that look like flowers, um, and the lettering. This, I had to look up. It's actually Scandinavian Swedish, um, and it says, welcome to spring. This is another really good one. Um, it lets you know right away that these pants come in these three colors. Uh, it's very simple. The props are great. It's, you know, the clouds and it's the colors really complement the merchandise. And then lastly, there's a sign that says dancing in the rain because the pants are dancing. Um, the un only unfortunate thing, I mean, aside from that, this picture is totally blurry. Sorry. But the signage kind of, like I said, also blends into the background. So um, maybe something in white would have stood out more or maybe if they did this color or this color instead, it would have stood out more. So lastly, this is like the bonus round, um, just different ways that you can incorporate spring beyond the window display. You might not even have a window display. So um, another thing you can do is do something outside your lease line if, it, if they allow you to. You can bring uh, spring outdoors if it makes sense for your store. You can incorporate it onto your front table display, uh, like with these little lambs and this color scheme. Um, a thing about front table display is it doesn't necessarily have to be a table. It can be just whatever fixtures. Your front display is basically like whatever greets your customers immediately as they walk into the store. So um, I think Judy and I are probably going to be doing another um, another workshop, and it's going to be about front table displays. So we'll talk about that more. You can also hang props or merchandise in the, inside the store. Um, just make sure that it's either hanging over a table or hanging over a fixture so that nobody bumps their head. You can also do springtime in the top shelves of your displays. Um, so if it's, especially if it's a spot that people can't necessarily reach and so it doesn't make sense to put something up there that people would, um, that would be shoppable, then it's a great place to really do like a lifestyle display. Um, you can also do a focal wall, which is amazing because if it's, especially if it's like a smaller wall that um, you wouldn't necessarily be able to do fixtures on, you can really just use it to like make certain products, seasonal items pop. Um, and you can change out the colors in the background uh, depending on the season. And of course, the merchandise. Uh, another good thing to do too is to highlight a wall, especially if it's in the back of your store um, and it's kind of dark back there and you want to just make it pop. This is a good way to uh, bring some attention to it. You can pull all your merchandise together um, and create a specific color story. So if for springtime, you can do pretty much any color. Um, this is a good one for green. They basically pulled everything green in their shop and threw it on this table and it works. 
Um, you can do cross, mer cross merchandising. Um, so with this springtime display, they have books, they have gloves, they have um, a watering can, but what's related with all of these is they're all about gardening. You can continue it throughout onto your fitting room display as well. You can even just do decals on your walls the, or the fitting room doors like Therapy did here. You can continue it um, onto your cash wrap. So wherever your register is, maybe you can hang something up above or display something on the counter if you have space for it. Um, the other thing too, oh, so it doesn't have to be, these are spools of threads, but uh, you can make it like butterflies or whatever your theme is. So that's kind of uh, what you wanna do is create a journey for your customers so that when you're, when they're outside and they're looking at your window display, if they see butterflies out here, as they go in through your shop, they should see it at the front table display, they should see it on the back wall, they should see it in the fitting room, they should see it you know, all around your shop, even when they get to the register to check out, they should see it, and then as they're leaving, um, it should be something that kind of like sticks to them and they're like, oh, this, stop, this shop, they're doing whatever spring and whatever this one prop is. And it doesn't have to be butterflies. It can be whatever um, works for your customer. So going back to that, um, if you made any decisions throughout this or got any ideas or got inspired, make sure that uh, whatever your brand objectives were at the beginning when I was asked asking you what three things you want people to remember about your store, make sure that they're in line with that. And if you guys have any additional questions, you can feel free to contact me. Um, and if Mark has... We have two oh, questions. We got two questions. Yeah. Um, so Leanne from Oakland wrote, what are the big events, holidays between now and autumn that we should think about? And then how often should displays be switched? I say at least quarterly. Um, and if you're able to do it monthly, I think definitely monthly. And it, but it also really depends on your customer um, and how often they tend to come by. So, it, yeah, and it also depends on your foot, tra foot traffic. Um, and as far as holidays between now and then, it, like I said, depends on your customer. If Mother's Day makes sense for them, then, you know, do Mother's Day. What's great or what I would do for you is um, first figure out what your budget is that you want to be able to allocate towards displays and then um, look at a calendar and see you know between now and, and autumn like you said um, see how how many you're going to be able to do and um, and then pick out let's say there's three events let's say you have enough budget to do three different window displays then um, pick out three holidays that make sense for your customers so like if back to school makes sense for you then do a back to school display but if it doesn't then don't so really depends. First, focus on your budget, and then um, focus on how many different uh, this holidays you can do. And then between now and whatever that point of time is, um, see what holidays would relate for your customer. Leanne said that's a great answer. Yay! Um, so there's one more question. It's from Irma in New York City. To help with displays, are there online sites that are particularly good for purchasing materials or for ideas? Ah, I see. Judy said I should do like a resource list, but I was like, I don't know where people are going to be tuning in from. So, um, well, there's Mannequin Madness. Uh, can you want to talk about yeah. Mannequin Madness? A couple right. things. Uh, there's a place called Oriental Trading, and they have a lot of great props as well as um, decoration party supplies that have application to store windows. Of course, Michael's Display, any kind of craft store or, or prop store. Um, but we will be putting together a resource list. And I would encourage you, if you have more questions after this is over, send them on Rose's Facebook page, so that way more people can see, and then we can always continue to update and also send links. And or we, on Town Squared. Or, or on Town Squared. So you have multiple choices, <laughs> Town Squared or the Facebook page, okay. as well as uh, we have a lot of boards on Pinterest under Mannequin Madness that are divided up by category. So Spring, Mother's Day, St. Patrick's Day, to make it easy to find something for your needs. And in many of those cases, the pictures will link to where you can find those products. Yeah, okay. and um, I was going to mention too that a lot of these photos, actually all of these photo examples were taken from Pinterest. Um, so if you go, we'll send you an email with a link to the Pinterest board then you guys can um, see that the examples that are provided here and also more examples that Judy has 
has has been adding to that. She's really good about keeping up with Pinterest, and I am not. Um, <laughs> so, but I'm working on it. Um, so, yeah, if you you know post something on Town Squared or on my Facebook page, um, and you know specify exactly where you're contacting or your your shop is, then I can try to do some research and help you find some more local places. Here in San Francisco and in the Bay Area, we have these amazing stores. That's not going to work for you, obviously, but uh, we have these amazing stores that basically it's like a Goodwill, but for like arts and crafts. So um, there's Urban Ore, there's Building Resources, there's, um, I'm blanking on the other one, Scrap in San Francisco. So these are all great Bay Area places, but I'm sure there's something equivalent in your location. So I'll try to do some research if you let me know where you are exactly. Awesome. No more questions. So. Yay. Let's keep okay. I'm going to give you a, a, I can't a believe we got through this without any technical issues. I mean, oh, there were <laughs> like my speaking issues, but that's separate. So, uh, thank you guys and I hope you learned something and got inspired. Awesome. Have a good day.